What's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Talking with Antonio, where I help aspiring entrepreneurs remove obstacles to jumpstart their online businesses today. Now, in this episode, I'm going to be talking about how to create and make custom thumbnails that gets clicks. Now, I'm going to show you one of my previous thumbnails. Look at this. I know it's horrible. I look like a naked mole rat. So I went from this to this. Now, these are so much better thumbnails, at least I think so. Granted, they may not be amazing, but I do think uh, these thumbnails have helped me generate over a thousand subscribers and helped me get a lot more views versus my previous ones. So I know you guys have requested this video, so hopefully you guys thoroughly enjoy it. Now, if you're not already subscribed, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. And thumbs up this video, especially if you get value out of it. But without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, you guys, so before I actually show you how I create my thumbnails, there is one thing that I do wanna discuss with you guys. Uh, so basically, before you even get into creating thumbnails, you definitely need to know who your target audience is and what niche you're going after because different niches require different thumbnail styles. So gaming thumbnails are totally different than, you know, like my thumbnails that are in the entrepreneurial or business niche versus tech versus lifestyle and vlog. So you definitely want to make sure you do your research on you know your niche and the type of thumbnails that work for your particular niche. Okay, so for me, again, I'm in the entrepreneurial business niche. So if you're in this niche, then these type of thumbnails will work for you. You know, if you're in the gaming niche, this thumbnail style may not work for you. Um, so you definitely wanna make sure you do your research. Now, you can still watch this video and figure out how you can incorporate some of the things that I use in my thumbnails for your niche or for your channel. Uh, it's entirely up to you, but I just wanted to say that because you know, you're not gonna get clicks if you're not creating the specific thumbnails that work for your niche. Got it? Cool. All right, you guys, so now I'm gonna take you through step-by-step step on how I create my thumbnails. Now, I do use uh, Adobe Photoshop 2020. Now, if you are using an older version of Photoshop, it will still work, so don't worry. Maybe the tools may look a little bit different, uh, in your interface, but still it's the same exact tools. They will work. So don't worry. Now, if you are using a different platform like Canva or PicMonkey, just take what I'm using, um, and the techniques that I'm using, um, you know, as your kind of guideline, you know, maybe the tools and how you do it in, uh, Canva or PicMonkey will be different, but just take, you know, my philosophies in mind and that should still be able to help you out. So don't you worry. Uh, but yeah, so let's get into it. So the dimensions that I use is 1280 by 720. Uh, I was doing 1920 by 1080, but I found during that resolution um, or that uh, size frame uh, doesn't work as good for YouTube. So I just do 1280 by 720. I think that's YouTube standard. So I would recommend you do the same no matter what platform you are using, Canva, PicMonkey, Adobe, just do the 1280 by 720. Now for me, I like to keep the same background. So typically I already have a template uh, that already has my background um, already on the canvas. Uh, but for this video, I'm gonna show you how I actually just drag and drop it. But I like using the same backdrop for all of my uh, thumbnails. It just creates continuity. And when people see my thumbnails, they know it's my video because I've been using the same type of thumbnails, the same backdrop. Uh, so you might want to do that for your thumbnails as well. Let me go ahead and find it. Uh -huh. Now I'm going to head and resize it. Boom, that is it. So now I have my backdrop. Typically what I like to do after this uh, is I normally put myself and then I mask or cut out myself from the background. So I know a lot of people wanna know how to do this, so I'm gonna show you how to do it. Let me find my picture. Let 
Boom, so this is the picture that I'm going to use. Now, typically I like to flip my picture. I don't know why, but I just like having my body on the left side of the frame. That's just my personal preference. You can do whatever you like, but me personally, I just like being on the left side of the frame in the thumbnail. I'm gonna show you how I do that. So I literally just scroll up here and hit the negative button and that flips it. So something very simple, very easy, but I personally like flipping it. It just looks better to me, but again, that doesn't really matter. It's up to your taste. Now you do wanna make sure that you are taking your photo. It's a high quality photo uh, because when people are looking at thumbnails, the thumbnail is typically very small. So you wanna make sure that your picture is very sharp. Uh, so I'm using a, a Sony A6400, which is a very, very sharp camera. Uh, so I would recommend using some type of DSLR or mirrorless camera for your picture for your thumbnail. But if you can't do that, you know, an iPhone or any high-end Android will be fine. Uh, but I do recommend making sure that the picture that you're using is very high quality. Now I'm gonna show you the tool that I use to mask out myself. It is the quick selection tool. That's what I use to mask myself out of the photo and I'll show you how to do that. Now the good thing about the newer version of Adobe 2020 or Photoshop 2020 rather, is that they have like a quick selection so it's really quick all i have to do is like drag you know my cursor over my body and literally it just automatically masks it for me it doesn't necessarily have to be perfect i just try to make sure that i don't miss anything Now, if you are somebody that is self-conscious about your skin, you can um, fix your skin. But to me, this doesn't look horrible. There are times when my acne goes crazy. So I do try to touch it up just a little bit. But for the sake of this video, I'm not gonna touch it up at all because I don't think my skin looks horrible. It's not the greatest, you know what I'm saying? It, it's tough out here in these streets. But still, you know, it's fine. But if you wanna touch it up, you can. There's, there's not a problem with that. So boom, next, all you have to do is hit the select and mask button. And voila, now you're out. Now on the side, you can play with the smooth, the feather, and all that does is um, essentially affect how uh, close you want the mask to be. So it's really up to your taste. You can play around with these sliders, but I'm typically happy, but you know, or typically happy with what is already I have preset. Um, but literally it's up to you. So boom, that looks good. Now typically I like to drag it all the way to uh the third corner. So typically I have like these in thirds. So I like to put myself in the last third uh, of the thumbnail. So I have enough room for my words. And then another question that a lot of people ask me is how do I add the little stroke, the little white thing that you see around myself? So I'll show you how to do that. So if you double tap on this layer over here, you have stroke and then just hit stroke. Boom, there you go. Really simple, it's not really hard, but I think it adds a pop. And then you can adjust the size of it. You can have it really crazy. You can have it really small. It's really up to you. But I typically do about five. That's what I like, but you can adjust it to whatever you think is necessary for you. And then another thing I like to do is add a drop shadow. 
I think the drop, the drop shadow just adds a little bit more of a, you know, dynamic effect to it. Uh oh. So boom, we're already like halfway done right now. All right, so I like that. Now, let's get to the words. Now, the font that I use is Fat Frank. I don't know where I got this from, to be honest with you guys, uh, but I wanted to have my own, uh, my own, uh, what is the word for this? Y'all know what I'm talking about. My own, uh... sorry, man, I, I cannot think about it, but essentially I wanted my own text or my own font, sorry. Um, so I wanted to make sure that whenever you see my thumbnails, you notice my font, this is my font. Um, and you might wanna do that for yourself. It just makes your uh, thumbnails a little bit more noticeable um, if you have your, your own font. Um, but this is mine, so I like it. Uh, y'all let me know in the comments if y'all like this font too. Uh, but this is something that I settled on, so you might wanna have your own font just to make your thumbnails a little bit more recognizable. I think, I'm gonna, I, think I wanna use Create bomb thumbnails i think i think i'm gonna use that right so let's do create create bomb thumbnail And I like, sure, I like to make sure that uh, everything is symmetrical, everything looks good. So that looks pretty good to me. Why? Why? Oh no. Then I always add a nice little drop shadow to my uh, words as well. Then I always add an arc to my uh, words too. Um, 
That might that might be a bit much. Now, typically after this, I try to figure out what else I can add um, to my thumbnail because a lot of times it just looks kind of basic. Um, so I think I'm gonna add like extra, actual like bombs uh, to this. Uh, I think it will add just a little bit of pizzazz, you feel me? Um, because right now it just looks very basic. So I wanna add something else to it. Then the same thing, just add a little drop shadow. All right, you guys, so I'm pretty happy with this thumbnail. It's pretty simple. I may tweak it just a little bit, but now you kind of understand my thought process. And the reason why I went with this uh, thumbnail, or I go with this thumbnail style is because it's very legible. It's very easy to read. Uh, so if you check out my thumbnails, even on a phone, you can still read it because the words are so big. I know they're very simplistic, but simplicity works. Uh, but I am pretty happy with this thumbnail right now. I might add something else to it, but honestly, even if I don't, this is still perfectly fine. So that is it for the video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Now, I will say having a good thumbnail is only one part of getting clicks and views. You have to make sure that you also do your other SEO uh, tactics. So if you haven't watched how to rank as a small YouTuber, make sure that you check out that video because that video is extremely informative. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. Until next time, be easy.